Yay. <laughs> All right. So it's live here. Is it popped up there yet? Yeah. I'm going to make sure that it comes live on my screen as well. Oh, thank you for tagging me, Kathy. You're welcome. We are trying to do this on two computers and reach all of you today. So I'm going to make sure this gets added to my timeline as well. And I think I think we just made that happen. Can you guys comment in the post below to let us know yeah. if you're seeing it on both Kathy and, and um, my timeline? Yeah. Well, is your timeline pulled up there? Can we refresh? I can do that. So while people are, are tuning in, we can uh, check and see if things are working. It looks like yeah, it. It is. Okay, so you're going to have to read it. Uh, Excellent. There we go. <laughs> Figuring out all the technical <laughs> details. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we're so glad you're here. We're going to be talking about some fun things today. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you that are from my channel, I'm here. I'm Kathy Virtually from theintimacydojo.com, and I'm here with Caroline Carrington from Caroline Car Carrington Tantra. I can't talk today, but it's in the <laughs> link. Um, so uh, I'm so glad you're here. It's exciting to talk to you about these things. Kathy and I have been geeking out all morning, and I was like, we've got to capture some of this on, <laughs> on uh, a video for all of you guys. Yeah. Uh, because Kathy has some amazing tools. Well, so do you. I love that we, we have different perspectives can often highlight the things that we're trying to learn. And if we just mm -hmm. hear it from one person, it may not stick. But if we hear it from two different angles, it's like, Oh, now I get it. And it's like, you own it, it's yours. And right. that's so, I love that kind of teaching where people are like helping people really embody it, not just like, oh, this is a bullet point that I'll forget next week. It's mm. like, this is, no, this is mine now. I got it. So we want that for you. Love it, Kathy. Yeah. Well, I'd love it if, as you're tuning in, if you can share in the comments below where you're tuning in from, mm -hmm. because I know both of us have audiences. All over the country, yeah. all over the world, yeah. and it's really fun for us to know um, who is joining us. And if you do have any questions along the way, feel free to put those in the comments below. I know my audience is used to these sort of marathon, 45 minute to an hour, and we're probably not going to go that long on this. So if you have a question, jump in there soon, and please do uh, let us know. Yeah, I'm curious, since I posted this and tagged you, I don't know if your audience is going to actually get tagged that you're live. I'm uh, not sure. So if you... If, we'll see. Yeah, yeah you guys if can... You wanna, if you want to Caroline's followers, please let us know if you got tagged that, that she was live. Because we're, we're this is the first experiment doing it this way. That's right. Tagging both of us. Yeah. We're trying to do it on one computer. And, which... Yeah. And one of the things we're modeling is that we don't have to do it perfectly because <laughs> none of us do this... <laughs> We'll talk about some techniques for dealing with that pressure so a little bit. But for me, healing and growth and anything we do, we're going to be awkward at it. The whole point is that as we move forward into something we haven't done before, we're not going to do it smoothly or perfectly. And I know for years that kept me locked in place mm. because I would look out and I would see all these other people doing things what looked perfect to me um, and not realizing that they might have practiced this for a long time or that – I was just seeing their fumbles as being new as opposed to me was I was wrong and bad because I wasn't getting it right. Mm. So one of the things I love to model is we're just walking down this path and we're trying things out. It doesn't have to be perfect to make a difference. We don't have to be perfect to make a difference. We can share our experiences and what we've learned. We can be just a few steps ahead of someone else. And that can often be more more helpful to someone than someone who's 10 miles down the road. So someone who's really good at climbing Mount Everest <laughs> might be a really <laughs> yeah. bad person to train me how to climb a rock wall at the gym because they so much is just embodied. And you know some of them may be really good trainers, but some of them are just like, they don't understand the struggles. Where someone who learned to climb a rock wall a month before might have some really good insights. Right. Because they remember the struggle and the, you know, they're just a little bit ahead of us. So yeah. Well, you are pushing right up against my growth edge, yes. Kathy, <laughs> which is good. So I'm going to be modeling um, as a recovering perfectionist <laughs> uh, to do my best to let it go. Yeah. And we didn't map out everything we were going to say. I'm so sorry. So we'll, we'll work with that, too. <laughs> that's so edgy for me, but it's good. It's tantric because we like to ride edges. So yeah. we get we get to play with that. So I want to share a little bit more about how we met, Kathy, yeah. because... I think it was 2014. It was 2014. 2014. I mean, the years are just flying by. But we met in Vegas uh -huh. at a conference, 
And um, it was Kathy, a great event. It was so fun because we were both helping organize it. That's right. Yeah. But Kathy told me a little bit later, she said she'd heard that I was a tantra teacher and she wasn't sure that this was going to work out because <laughs> she wasn't sure I'd be organized. And thankfully, I come from a corporate background. So yes, when yes. she met me, we hit it off like us. Well, I had prejudices, which I have since dissolved many of them. Good. But I, I'm an engineer, PhD engineer. Yes. I, I certainly have some woo-woo energetic stuff. I like mm -hmm. pragmatic tantra. Um, but I had this fear of like things just going, oh, we'll figure it out in the moment versus I like to have everything laid out and organized. Right. And so, but no, it worked great. We had a lot of fun. We did? Yeah. Yes. So part of why we wanted to share this video with you is um, both of us are actually quite passionate about uh, helping people feel supported around trauma and to develop some skills yeah. uh, and to have some tools. And some of my audience knows I've been arranging um, trauma workshops in the Bay Area that I'm not teaching. I have somebody else who's an expert come in to teach. Uh, because you actually have to work and understand trauma quite a lot before you're qualified to teach it. Um, There's so many nuances and, and things you can understand as you go deeper. Right, it's a really big subject. It's like saying, teach me about music. Like, oh, well, what it's, kind of music and why? Exactly. Yeah. But as we were chatting this morning, you were just sharing, and I've known about your tapping for a while, um, some people know it as EFT, mm -hmm. right? Emotional what freedom techniques. Emotional freedom technique. I always forget. It's what plural that. techniques because techniques. there's um, it, there's certain a certain basis for it, but you, there's a flow to mm -hmm. it and different things you can try when you're doing it. So it's plural. If you need right. to know that, and uh, I do because yeah. I'm I'm here to learn from Kathy more today. I've done the EFT in the past, but not very much of it. Yeah. And um, can you just give us a, an example of a little bit of how the technology works? Sure. Um, so I started studying this about 11 years ago when I was trying to recover from my own trauma. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they were still not sure why it worked. They've done some really good studies at Harvard and Ohio State Medical that um, where they've put people in an FTIR and watched what parts of their brain. Sorry, brains. an FTIR. You have Fourier to... transform infrared machine. What is it? Does that track? It maps the brain and sees there what parts are active in the head. In it's actually brain. good. I don't know so much about this. So I can ask all the questions you guys would be asking. Um, so it's a way to map what parts of the brain are very active. And they've done other studies, but that's the one that I, the ones I've studied, the, read the most. But they look and see which parts of the brain lights up when they're doing tapping. And what they've come to understand is that as we experience things, they, this is known for neurology and traumatology, we have things that come into our survival part of our brain. The limbic. The limbic part system. Of the brain. And it, mm -hmm. so it can react fast. It's supposed to have first dibs. If you see a snake, you're not supposed to go, hmm, that looks like a snake. It might be dangerous. Maybe I should do something about it. Like you're already dead. Right. So like, <laughs> if you've ever noticed you see a stick out, if you're out hiking or something and you see a stick and you jump, Right. That's your limbic system. Your, um, your prefrontal cortex had nothing to do with it. Um, so things come in. Our, our primitive brain, our survival brain, limbic system is interacting with the world. And normally what happens is our prefrontal cortex goes in and either right away or when we sleep, it goes in and helps clean things up. Mm, so, so it clears out it the messages. It helps in the understand limbic. what's what's actually real and important. So the part of our brain back here, our survival brain, has the intelligence of a small dog. Wow. Yeah. So it's not super smart. It's yeah. very, very powerful, but it's not very smart. So it's like instinct, instinct and it takes yes. over. Mm -hmm. Um and if you've ever seen a dog that's afraid of a broom or a person with a hat. Like it's, it's not, not even logical sometimes. Mm. And one of the things I love working with people around trauma is they'll say, Oh, this doesn't make any sense. And I'm mm. like, ah, this is it. We're on the right track because you can't think your way out of something that doesn't make sense. Krishna Das says this yeah. to drop in some woo, but he says exactly that. Yeah. He's like, you can't think yourself out of the prison that your mind created. Yeah. And it's so true. Yeah. So um, what happens when we tap is it helps reconnect the cognitive part of our brain and our, our limbic system so that they can kind of sort it out. So if you're, say you're a little kid and you're biking along and you're so proud, you just got your training wheels off. You are feeling really good about yourself and you just had some ice cream as a treat. Oh, and now you're going out good. on your first <laughs> trip down the sidewalk all by yourself and you're feeling a little cocky. Like, hmm, I got this. I got this. I don't need any training wheels. Why didn't I get rid of them a week before? Um, and all of a sudden you fall mm. and you hurt. Like you, there's a crack in the sidewalk. You fall, you scrape your chin. 
Um, and what your brain is, your, your survival brain is absorbing is everything around you. So the neighbor is mowing the lawn. You might hear this, you might have the smell of the mm. fresh lawn lawn. You can hear the sound of it. You have the taste of the ice cream in your mouth. Um, the feeling of being very happy. Mm -hmm. You know, when this happened, the brain absorbs all of those and goes potential danger next to all of those. Ah, uh, so it's created a map. A map. Right. Now, what's supposed to happen is your prefrontal cortex later goes in and goes, oh, sweetie, got it. Yeah, those things were all happening, but the lawn, not related. Um, cockiness, not so much. You know, the happiness, not so much, but you weren't paying attention. Really, you should have paid attention to the crack in the sidewalk. Ice cream, not related. Um, so that it cleans up. It erases the ones that aren't related to the actual thing that happened. So ice cream still gets to stay a happy thing. It could still stay okay, a happy good. thing. Good, yes. right? Good. Depends how it um, maps. Yes. So you're just mapping it better. The problem is most of us are taught to uh, suppress our reactions to things. Mm. So normally a trauma happens. Something, you know, anything can be traumatic. It, to a small child, things that to an adult like this isn't traumatic. I don't know why they're upset to a small child may feel traumatic because something that's traumatic is something that's apparently life-threatening that we can't do anything about. So um, little kids are not encouraged if their teacher's kind of bullying them. They're not encouraged to run, around, run away. Someone goes mm. after you, can't flee. They run after them and catch them, put, bring them back. Um, if you kick your teacher, if you fight your teacher, you're going to be punished. So mm. the fight and flight are shut down, um, and all you're left with is freeze. Mm. Um, and freeze happens in the animal world too, but they, when they're over the freeze, whenever the, the rabbit frozen in the bushes, the fox goes away, it, it'll shake and it will make noises and it'll run. It burns it off and blows away that, that frozen state versus humans. It's like, pull yourself together. Big girls don't cry. Big boys don't cry. I will give you something to cry about. We shut down right. that release. So yeah. it gets stuck. Mm -hmm. So if mom and dad, you know, you're biking along and, and you fall and mom and dad run over and they're like, oh, you're fine. Stop crying. What, you know, if you don't stop crying, you, you'll, you won't be able to ride your bike. Mm -hmm. Shuts it down. So yes. that little kid now has this frozen trauma with this blackboard saying it's dangerous to smell mown grass. Mm. It's dangerous to have ice cream and feel happy. And, and our brain puts it, again, not super smart, very, very powerful, really well-intentioned, but not super smart. And we can link things that aren't linked. Right. So I work with clients all the time that have trauma experiences. And they will say, like, I don't know why. I'll be just like, if I smell fresh mown grass, I get really anxious. Mm. And it's probably linked to some experience they had when they were younger where it may not make, you know, it doesn't necessarily make logical sense. Yeah. Um, to, the, to someone else. So trauma is a way, you know, there's ways with tapping where we can activate the connection between the prefrontal cortex and the survival part of our brain so we can go in and clean up those blackboards and change these frozen states, like help release that energy so that people can feel whole and present now mm. versus having parts of them stuck in those moments of terror. And still activating in the present time. Yeah. So for those of you that are new to trauma or what that could even be, Kathy gave a definition and uh, that's closely linked to the DSM, which is like the Bible for therapists. There's another one that I, I really like that um, trauma is anything that is above your nervous system's ability to, to, to handle or to cope. Mm -hmm. And the reason I like that is because it, it then empowers you to decide if something has landed as traumatic. Right. It's, it's, that's uh, Siegel, right? The talks about I don't, it? I don't know who. Dan Siegel. Yeah. Uh, he's one of, he's, I think he's the one that set that, that definition. Great. Thank I'm you not, for I'm telling not a, me. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a therapist, but I am a PhD research scientist. And when I was recovering from my own trauma and as mm -hmm. I help people, I kind of went down the rabbit hole and studied with, everything I could find. And I yes. love that definition of anything over what we can handle. Yeah. I think of us all having tanks that we can, and everybody's tanks a little different. Yeah. Depending on our life experiences. But some of us have tanks that are kind of full already. We may have mm -hmm. old traumas in there that are kind of rocks filling up the tank or whatever. Um, and someone who's having a lot of life experiences all at once, their tank, there's a lot of water coming in at once. It may overflow. So we I do like get to that define. Metaphor. Yeah. So like, yeah. How how full is your tank? And I love techniques like tantra and meditation and visualization and tapping, somatic release that can help lower the tank, and over time actually make the tank bigger, so we're more resilient. 
So right. we can handle more things. I know now I can handle things that 10 years ago I'd have been like, oh, dear Lord, where's the closet? I'm going to go hide in the back of it. Mm -hmm. um, so it is about working with trauma and supporting people to release that trauma. It's about helping you feel more resilient and yes. more empowered so you're able to cope sometimes even just with everyday life stuff. Yes. Um, and just one other thing I want to pull out because Kathy said so many valuable things in there that she talks about fight, flight, or freeze. Mm -hmm. And those are three. And there's also fawn that people talk so about. Yeah. So, which I think is legit. Right. But so those are responses to trauma. It's the way everybody responds differently. Uh, and and I, it's a way to respond to life experiences. It becomes trauma when none of those aren't working and we're not allowed to release them. Right. Once it's unresolved. Yes. So somebody could have a traumatic experience like a car accident and walk away totally fine. Mm -hmm. And for example, about a year ago, I, I was in what some people could have thought was a minor fender bender and it was really traumatic for me. Yeah. And, um, I'm obviously doing much better now, but it, I just wanted to highlight that it's really up to how it ends up landing for you. How we interpret it. Exactly. The meaning mm -hmm. and purpose we put towards it. So we wanted to get onto some skills with tapping and um, we're saying tapping and we're saying EFT, but like, can you just, before we even go into an exercise, explain some of the basics of what it is? Cause I know when I've done it before, I've kind of felt a little bit strange. Oh yeah. Well, it's, uh it, it involves like tapping parts of your face and mm -hmm. we, we're going to do it together. I'm going to yeah. be weird with you, but yeah, tell us more about what the tapping involves. So basically what they've done is they've taken some of the meridian points from Chinese acupuncture that has been around for 5,000 years. Didn't that, see them, I, know, I know all these things about energy and I don't know this. Yes. Okay. So they the, and they the picked the, the major meridians that end and they found, found places that they ended in easy, easy to reach places. So there's some on our feet, there's some on our knees, um, it's hard to take your shoes off in an office meeting. Right. Um, there's one under the left breast. You're not going to be walking oh. for females, you know, female body people. You're not necessarily going to want to walk down the street lifting your boob and tapping under there. I've never done tapping there. So I don't think the liver meridian is a great one. Oh, for well, maybe after energy. the video. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what they just did was they found points that were some powerful meridians ended on places that people could access quickly and easily. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some people that had done, you're supposed to do them in certain orders, whatever. Um, and I've, I've experimented with a lot of different approaches to this. I really like EFT because it's easy to remember. And mm. we're basically hitting all the meridians versus having to memorize. There's um, TFT, there's, there's a bunch of different ones where they do um, actual, there's patterns you follow. Different kinds of tapping modalities. Yes, approaches. Okay. So some people call it energy tapping. You know, EFT mm. is a specific approach to that. Um, and I like EFT because we're going through the meridians and we just mm. repeat. It's all energy work. It's energy work. I didn't know that. Yes. Now I'm much more sold on the idea. <laughs> it's, a, it's a somatic approach to access energy and let your prefrontal cortex interact with the survival brain, release frozen traumas. Oh. And clean up the blackboard so that you're reacting to things that really exist now. Yes, not versus, stuck in an old story about right. something. Yes, which I love. And that's a lot about what Tantra is about. Mm -hmm. And anything that's mindful and meditative. It's like I want to be present with the people and the actions I have right now so that I can interact and do things in a way that makes sense. And not in present time, not be bringing mm -hmm. in stuff. Not deciding past. that my boss looks like my dad or you know, is yeah. angry like my dad and then wondering why I'm so nervous and I can't relate to him. Like, oh, let me release that energy, that, that belief, mm -hmm. so I can see this person as a real human being versus a, as a picture I have stored from old times. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. Great. Well, how about we dive into some... Slips. tapping <laughs> and I'm so much more juiced yeah I, I'm kind of weird I get really excited geeking out on energy and on trauma and on breath but it's it's so fun yeah yeah right. love more tools okay. okay yeah I love having tools in the toolbox is this this is one I that I respond really well to mo like 95% of our clients adore it about 5% are like it's a useful tool but it's not my favorite um, and I like it because it's empower empowers people to do this. You you can definitely tap on yourself to mm. calm yourself down. Um, if you're interested, we actually have a page on thrivingnow.com 
thrivingnow.com mm. forward slash trauma. We have some interviews with top neurologists. We oh, have wow. Um, I need a to bunch, go check this out. Yeah, um, <laughs> a bunch of different things to understand where trauma comes from, and then we also include something called the grounding exercises, mm. which I work with clients. So important. I work with clients over Skype all over the world, and if they get activated because some of the deep you know deep traumas as they come up, I always encourage you to get support. Have local support, online support, you know, get many supports for working through that because you don't want to re traumatize yourself by being under resourced and facing something that was really scary to you. Right. So, like having a trauma specialist as a therapist. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. having, a, having a therapist nearby, having friends you can call. And the grounding exercise sizes actually is a PDF you can print out. Mm. Um, and it has a place to put who should I call because when we're activated when we're triggered you can't remember anything so we have write down that person's name and number write down these things that will calm you down and help you come out of the trauma response where we kind of get pulled back in time to that thing that's activating us and help us get grounded in the present right now with our prefrontal cortex actually working so you can find those at thrivingnow.com forward slash grounding and we're going to put the link in for them, just in case yeah. you miss it. We'll put it in after the after the video. Yeah. Um, so we we can actually do it. Yeah. And when I say a demo, we haven't planned this, so I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Trust in Kathy; she's amazing. So, and I'm really picky. I'm really picky about. Well, I well, love that you're willing me... to explore, like stepping outside the perfectionist zone. <gasps> well, I always tell my students that they've got to like play to whatever com edge is comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. So this is me modeling some of that today nice. um, but one of the things you suggested to me before we started was that we're not going to pick like my most uh, yeah my most difficult trauma in life to work on now you would really want to do that with somebody trained or in a one-on-one -on -one, say with yeah, you oh, I do it in group sessions sometimes but oh. it's a closed more closed container right so it's more safely and, held we're not going to do that now right. on Facebook and Live. usually it's with people that we built up some trust with Right. I wouldn't like when I get a new client, I'm like, we're not going to dive in the deep end of the pool first. We're going to get in the shallow end and make sure exactly. we understand what we each other need and how we react to each other and, and the process. I don't know when this happened, but clearly I was resourcing. I grabbed Kathy's <laughs> hand. Maybe it was when we started talking about perfectionism. I was like, oh no. Um, <sighs> just taking a breath to yeah. resource a little bit. So, yeah, if you want to, you can just take a nice, slow, deep breath right now. And that's a really good grounding technique. If you suddenly turned around a corner and there was a bear there or a wolf, something scary, mm -hmm. you would immediately start breathing very rapidly and shallowly to give a lot of oxygen to your system so that you can run really fast. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't take a nice slow deep breath and make noise. <sighs> you would not do that if a bear is there. There's a biofeedback loop in how we act mm -hmm. to our brain and then our brain to our body. So we can actually intentionally do things like taking slow, deep breaths, drinking something cool or warm, that again, you're not going to like, oh, there's a bear. Hold on while I get a glass of water. Not going to happen. <laughs> right. So we can, we can actually ground ourselves by doing things that give us that biofeedback loop. So and things like drinking, you said something hot, drinking mm -hmm. hot tea if you can um, actually track that the warm sensation feel is it. going down and feel it in your body, mm -hmm. that's going to help you come back to presence. And if you're having a hard time doing that, um, you know, I, I noticed that um, people could be disassociated, yes. for example, which means energetically they've left to keep themselves They're safe. They're living up here or in their head somewhere, not really right. in their body. No, yeah, some people even enough. describe it like they'll... I'm trying to get my hand on the camera. That's not working. But anyway, <laughs> there we go, that hand. Then they can see themselves, sort of they're sitting in the corner of the room or something. It's really common for trauma survivors. Right, because they weren't safe the in the moment in their body, so they, they jump out. That's to, very clever. It's a really good solution at the time. At the time, it's a good strategy, but to live like that, then It's you're hard. If you're in a meeting present. and your boss does something that kind of makes you feel uncomfortable and you're all of a sudden up there and you're like, how do I control what's happening now? You know, it's hard to do that from there. Right. So, yeah. So there's lots of techniques and approaches on this. Um, when you think about, so if we focus on the perfectionism. Oh, goodness. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. And we're we're going to just take it gently and slowly. We don't have to solve Thank you. Every, I have to let go. Yeah, yeah. But well, can, I, can I touch you again if I need you support? Can. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks for asking. Um, so what I like to do is we can step into it slowly. We can take breaks. In tapping, when there's something called like a five-minute miracle where you tap just a few minutes and it goes away, 
That's a, that happens about 5% of the time when someone's super ready and you hit it just right on target. Most of the time it doesn't. Most of the time it's a more gradual thing. Mm. Um, when, it, when is it appropriate to use this? Like Tapping? Yeah. like I tap all the time. I tap in the car. I tap in work. I will show you. You tap at work? I do. I will oh, you can tap on these the there's, sides, There's a right? spot. Yeah, I the karate chop right here. And there's also points on the side of the fingers right oh, here. You can just rub them? Yep. So you That's can sit. so surreptitious. Nobody yeah. would even know. I sit there with my hand under the desk. I'm like, even though this is really stupid, I'm okay. Even though he said something that I already said. Can you do it on any finger? Any of the fingers. There's there's meridian points just right to the right or just to the side of the, the fingernail. So oh, and we have God. we have um, diagrams that will show where they are too. Great. So, but you can just rub your fingers together. There's a there's some points, not an EFT point, but a point, a meridian point right here. And this the is the headache thing mm -hmm. that people. Yes. Yeah, there's like some in your that. wrist. So just there's a lot oh, of. Oh, so just like really rubbing around your, hand your hands. Can help. Yeah, I'm noticing <laughs> my body, my hips just drop. And you just got to get into your body a little more. Yeah. So um, you can definitely there's a nine gamut point right here between the outs the between the, the pinky f bone and the, the index finger bone pinky. in the hand. Oh, so like yeah. you kind of dig in here. Okay. Oh, off. I've had acupuncture on yeah. that way. Ah, yeah. it all links together. It's so fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So what, one thing we like to do is because one of the things that's really interesting about tapping is while it will never change, um, it won't make you believe something that isn't true. It won't so it's not like hypnosis where you're programming the yeah, mind. That's, yeah, no, good. It's gonna, that's good to know. Yeah, it will help you. It always helps you find the truth. One of the interesting things they call it an apex effect. A lot of times people will sometimes, though, like as they process through, they don't remember how scared they used to be. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a video, really fun video that they showed us when we were first training. This uh, woman was terrified of snakes, like mm. objectly. So if, if there was no snake in the room and you told her the word snake, she would scream and put her feet on the, t on the chair. Wow. Okay. Like that scared. So they do, it was about a 35 minute video, like 35 minutes passed through this time. Mm. They do some tapping on it. Um, and then they actually bring a snake into the back of the room and she's terrified. It's in a cage. <laughs> wow. It's like 30 oh, feet so away, it's so but she can it's see so... it. And so they have to tap and they tap and she gets calm. Oh, and goodness. at the end of the video, she's holding the snake. She's holding the snake. Wow. And Isn't it's not a amazing? poison snake or anything. Right, right. But it's, it's helped her get over her phobia, She's holding it. it. And they ask her, well, did the tapping help? And she said, oh, I was never that afraid of snakes. And they show her the video, and she's like, oh, I was afraid of snakes. Well, so it literally reprograms the brain. The, brain, the brain's like, I, this is That's not amazing. scary anymore, so why am I even worried about it? So when you think about not being perfect, oh. from zero to ten, zero being it doesn't bother you at all, and ten being... And you can pick a specific area. Is it about teaching? Let's let's tune in a little bit. Where where's an area that it feels wow, this is not good? Good. Right, right now, ready. all of it. Okay. Um, yeah, not being perfect. I think revs at a seven or an eight of okay. ten is, is yeah. yeah. Okay. And where do you feel that in your body? Okay, let me I, I keep closing my eyes because it's good? easier for me to track. Um, probably most in my throat, it sort of rises up okay. like this. And what do you yeah. feel in your throat? Like what is this? Like a tightening, it feels dry. Mm -hmm. I'm noticing my anxiety. Yeah. Oh, I'm very nervous to do this yeah. live. Noticing my anxiety I come really up. I appreciate your vulnerability and we don't Thank have to you. go any deeper. You don't have to Thank answer you. my questions if you don't okay. want to. That's one of the try. nice things we can tap anyway, even if you don't, you can say, I don't want to say that out loud. We can do tapping anyway. It's pre all I'm trying to do is make it present for Caroline. Oh, it's present. Yeah. It's present all the time. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> yeah. if you're willing to share, what do you think, what does your brain think would happen if you weren't perfect? Um, well, I grew up in a pretty dysfunctional household mm -hmm. and there was a lot of, um, my, my mom was OCD and expected everything to be like, yeah, exact. Uh -huh. And there were pretty dire consequences if, if things were not done exactly. So that generated a lot of fear. And mm -hmm. I think that's, yeah. So um, there were consequences. What do, in terms of like, what did you think you would be the fearful part when we're kids, mm -hmm. we decide most of our beliefs are decided by the time we're five and they're not always logical. Just like now you probably wouldn't have a three year old tell you what house to buy or who to date, but many of us are actually running on those patterns right? because we decided it. So what did that little you who was very, very smart and very, very clever, but didn't have a lot of experience in life, decide what happened if you weren't perfect. Because there's some... Oh, I know what would have happened. Okay. 
My mother was abusive, so I would have been hit. Okay. If, yeah. So it was threatening. The, like threatening. Physically. Yeah, physically, and I was frightened. Yeah. I didn't like being frightened. Okay. And how old is that little one that, that, oh, that figured I, out, I have I think, to be perfect? Um, do I have to have an age? You I do not. I don't know if I can get to an age. No, it's okay. Yeah, an age okay. is harder. So let's just do some tapping, and we're going to we're gonna send it to that little one because oh, she's like holding that. this energy, right? I'm doing lots of work around my little girls. So yeah, I like that. Thank so you. So we, we almost always start on the karate chop, which is the place you would haya something, the karate chop. Does it matter which hand? Oh, no, yeah, you can switch back and this. forth okay. if you want to. And you're tapping about the – if you were drumming your fingers on the table to make a tapping noise, about that, that you don't want to hurt yourself, but you do want to feel it gently. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start there. And if you're in a place where you want to tap along, you're welcome to use the words we use or change them slightly. Our brain will interpret them how that will best help you. Okay, and if you start getting triggered for anything, if it brings up other stuff, just ground. You can stop. You can turn off the video and watch later. Take a deep breath. All right, so we're going to start on the karate chop. And just imagine that little girl's in front of you and you're sending her this energy. So karate chop. Hey, sweetheart. Do I need to say something? It helps if you would oh, say it out loud. It'll help I you see. stay present. Okay. Hi, it's, sweetheart. Thank oh. you for being so brave. I'm just not looking at you because I want to focus fine. on her. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being so brave. I really admire you. I really admire you. You were really little. You were really little. And that was scary. And that was very scary. And you did it. And you did it. You figured out how to make it through. You figured out how to make it through. I have great news for you. Oh, I like this one. I have great news for you. It works. It worked? We survived. Oh, we survived. Yes, we're still here. <laughs> you did it. Thank you. I, uh, you did it. You were so brave. I have to say you were so, oh, you were she so was. brave. She was yes. really brave. She was so brave. It was so confusing. Yes, it was so confusing. And you thought you had to be perfect. And I thought I had to be perfect. Because someone really powerful told you so. Yes, because somebody really powerful told me so. And guess what? And guess what? We're not little anymore. Do I have to believe everything I say? No. You <laughs> I feel very little right now. I'm tapped right into it. But... Okay, no. So but she's say. still little. Yes. But do you, can, she, can she realize that maybe, can you look around the room while you just tap? Oh, yeah. Let her see around the room. Does this look like where you grew up? No. Right. You can... oriented me. Thank you. Yeah. I like that. Okay, yes. So... No, now I'm back in adult self. Okay, yeah. so what did I have to say to her? We're not so little anymore. Oh, yeah, I'm not so little anymore. Now I can a, believe you. We have a lot more power. Oh, yes, I have a lot more power. And we can actually model it's okay to not be perfect. Do I have to believe that? To say? Uh, it <laughs> might, no, so thank you for speaking it's up. Hard it's hard because okay. I want to be in integrity and yeah. tell you. No, no, it's true. great. I love it. It might be possible. <sighs> it might be possible. To model that we don't have to be perfect. <sighs> it's not even possible to maybe... No, well, I'm doing it on the Facebook Live, yes, so it might, be it might be possible. <laughs> Maybe someday. Maybe someday. To model we don't have to be perfect. You make me say that. To model that we don't have to be perfect. Yeah. So we're just now we're going to go to the top of our uh, head. There's a ton of points up here, so you can just tap whatever feels just, good. Can mm -hmm. I do two? Okay. Yeah, you can do I'm the like, flat of your hand. You can do two. I'm all into as much activation yeah. as you can And possibly. again, still sending the energy to that little girl. Oh, um, yeah. That was really scary. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That That's was okay. really scary. And we're going to the eyebrow point, right, right where the nose and the Is eyebrow meets. Oh, yeah. yeah, right here. I, no wonder you were overwhelmed. No wonder you were overwhelmed. And now we're going to go to the outside of the eye, when the bone there, not so close you blink, and not into the temple, but just on that bony part yeah. right there. You did such a good job. You did such a good job. And now we're going under the eye, we're under the pupil on the cheekbone right here. And yep, that yep. Okay. And you can do both hands or one. It doesn't matter. I am so glad you were so courageous. I'm so glad you were so courageous. And now we're going under the nose, right in the crease, below the base of the nose, between the upper lip and the base of the nose, right here, right in the center. Yep. Even though it was so confusing. Even though it was so confusing. And now we're going down to the chin, the crease right here. You did it. You did it. And now we're going to the collarbone point, which is... If the point of your collarbone is here. You want to go an inch in and an inch down into that soft area here. You can yeah. do both sides. Yep. You really Ooh. rock. You really rock. And now we're going under the arm where the bra, so right where the bra crosses from. Where my bra would be. Yep. That I'm not wearing today. <laughs> Modeling, not me. <being laughs> Even though that was really scary. So what am I doing here? Just tapping. 
You're just just tapping, tapping the yeah. same as yeah. I was doing. Okay. Yep. Even though I'm not perfect. I maybe you can help people more. <laughs> I might possibly... I'm doing this like live. Yeah. I might possibly be able to help people more. Can I add some more into yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. By, by showing my humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Then go back up to the top Ooh. of the head. I so appreciate you helping us get here. I so appreciate you helping us get here. And I so look forward to discovering how to move forward together. And I so look forward to discovering how to move forward together. Take a nice, slow, deep breath. <sighs> and just tune into your body and notice what you're feeling. Feeling two things. Okay. One, like it got very still, mm -hmm. like I'd gone into that, like I'm even noticing I'm talking slower. Uh -huh. So like I'm in meditation. And my mind space is quite quiet. Like normally it's very busy. Yes. So the monkey mind has taken a break. Um, there's still a little bit of anxiety here, but the, the lower part of my body feels really calm. And yeah, that's quite common for me from yeah. somatic experiencing. I often, when I'm down regulated, yeah. I feel more relaxed here. Yeah. And I feel like solid in, in my body. It's nice. Yeah. Well, I, I, one of the oh. things I model when I teach is mm. that we don't have to be perfect. And I work mm. a lot with educators. Um, and a lot of them have that they're afraid to get started because they're afraid of not doing it perfectly. They're afraid mm. of not being, they're either vulnerable or awkward. And my point is most of our clients, especially if we work around sexuality or Tantra, mm -hmm. they are terrified out of their mind. They're dealing with shame of even talking about it. No right. knowledge. Um, and if we can model that, oh, I can trip. I can say the word, wrong word and correct it. I can, you know, I can do the things to make it better. Gives that, them the spaciousness then, right? Then they can say, oh, I don't have to be perfect. It lets the door be wider. It lets, I think, of it, the courage to entry, the price of entry mm -hmm. can be just a little bit lower where they can come in and go, oh, okay, that is a little scary. But, oh, look, she's not perfect either, and she's willing to share this. Right. So that's what I like to model. If you think about that and imagine that little girl holding your hand and going up in front of to teach and modeling that, how does that feel? Feels good. Yeah. Is she excited? Let me see if she's yeah. excited. She's not nervous. She mm -hmm. just feels confident. Yeah. She has a lot of power, a lot of energy. Yeah. That's what bottled up all this time. That's amazing. So if you tune back in before you had your throat and you said you had some tension in here, what's going on there? So the anxiety is gone. Now there was like anxiety activated here and that's mm -hmm. gone. And I feel quite solid mm -hmm. um, and I feel very centered and it's easy to be present in my body. Oh, and it, I got pretty activated. It, this was very edgy for You're me to do a on the, you could, <laughs> Kathy's so delightfully sensitive. Yeah. And it just like my brain, like I am in meditation, it, it, it feels quite altered still, mm -hmm. but in a, everything slowed down down in mm -hmm. a way yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. it's good so would you ask that little girl if she would like to help you with something and I just you don't ask have, you just ask in your head or you can ask okay. out loud whichever feels good oh model being yes. perfect would you like to help me with something and what does she say I want to help you love all parts of you. Mm, that's beautiful. And would you let her know that sometimes you still forget you have the habit of perfection and that you would love her to help you remember that it actually can help people more when we're not trying to be there. So sometimes I forget about my habit or pattern of perfection and I'd love you to remind me that, love you to remind me that it's okay to not be perfect. You can actually help people more. Oh, and I can help people more. Thank you. Does that feel true and good? Yeah. It feels very gentle now. Mm -hmm. The whole interaction feels very yeah. 
The really ironic thing is I find when I'm in that space where I'm relaxed and not trying to be perfect, I'm actually much more on my game and aware, read the room better, interact with people mm. better than when I'm trying to be perfect in my head. Right. So I'm actually, and I think people can feel the space. Like when I'm just grounded and present with them and I'm just like, here I am. What, how I am is how I am. I'm not perfect. You know, like I'm not what I imagine a teacher should be. Mm. Like for a long time, I wouldn't show my photo because I thought it would be being a bigger person would harm my business partner's relationship or his reputation. Mm. Um, he never had a problem. I had the problem. Right. Um, and I just, I've had so many people come up to me saying, you know, wow, you're modeling that you can be out there doing things as a big person. Like we just get to bring ourselves forward and do our best and with a genuine integrity. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really powerful thing we can offer the world. Well, I have an example where I did put myself out yeah, imperfectly. And um, this is for those of you that are entrepreneurs or trying to get started on something new. Um, when you when you run your own business, you, you don't have money, especially in the beginning, to pay everybody to yes. do things for you, right? And um, I remember the very first newsletter I created on MailChimp. It was awful. <laughs> It had mistakes in it, like mm -hmm. things didn't work because I was totally self-taught. Thank you for the hearts, you guys. The hearts are helping. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing the love. Um, but yet, and, and, and I press send, you know, it probably took me three or four hours to figure it out, but I press send and even though it wasn't perfect, I got it out. And that was a huge victory because I noticed so often with some of my friends or colleagues, like they, they keep refining and they keep refining and it's good to refine. I refine every time I teach and yeah. every single time I put a new newsletter out, I keep learning. But if I had waited until it was perfect, it probably right. would have been three years till I got anything out. So which many people have never me. start because they're trying to be so perfect. And right. probably the next time you did it, you were a little, it was a little easier to make oh, it. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah. It's, and it's still not perfect because <laughs> I'm still learning. Yes. You know, I've, I've, I've never done a whole marketing training or been coached on this. But um, when, when I have people come to my workshops and they're like, thank you so much. We've been looking for this. And you have the same thing. You run wonderful events, Kathy. I think so. It's, I love, I like, there's Touching room for people, so right? many people. There's, there's so many people need help. So, mm -hmm. like, to me, it's like, I love there's other people and we can riff off each other and refer each other and, and, and make the world. And support each other. Yeah. yeah. So that's part of why we've been doing this Facebook Live, because we wanted to offer a resource uh, to you. And, and Kathy and I both have YouTube channels. Kathy has an astounding, what did you say? 900 videos. 900 videos. Wow. Okay, mine's not as impressive, but <laughs> but I started one. I just started with a few, and you exactly, got and then you slowly that, build. Yeah. So yes. for those of you that are building your businesses, you start with one, and Facebook Live makes it so easy because you just jump on and and then you can convert that to YouTube. So um, we love offering these free tools so that you can you can experience us and start learning from us long before you perhaps ever meet in person or before you've signed up for any of our coaching yeah. or, or they say that 95 percent of people that are look at a product don't buy i want 95 percent wow i want those people to go away with some information that will make their lives better right. i just think of it as ripples going out on a pond kathy so. is so incredibly generous i just yeah love working with her and so aside from all these free offerings, yeah. you have something else you want to talk about. Um, well, we just, uh, we just finished uh, creating a body confidence program mm. because we've, I, I know and when I'm, you say we, you keep saying we oh, and I, sorry, it, our audience doesn't know. Yes. Rick Wilkes from thrivingnow.com. He's my business partner and amazing man. Um, and we just did, I, you know, I've struggled with body confidence my whole life. Mm. And it's really interesting. I look back at photos of me at 10 when I was convinced I was this enormous person that no one could love. And I actually didn't have any weight to lose to by even right. medical standards. Um, and I learned, I was really embodied with that. Like I was never going to be good enough unless I looked a certain way. And I just turned mm. 50 and that was like, mm. oh, you know, this is me. I'm mm. just me now. At Your this, lovely, radiant self. I get to, and, and if I'm hiding behind my fears and judging myself and letting that get in the way of acting with other people, connecting with mm. other people, I'm not just depriving myself, I'm depriving the world. Um, and so we, we made this nine week program for people to walk through, understand where a lot of the fears come from in media mm -hmm. and trauma and you know, early beliefs. And we do tapping to release some of them, some oh, visualizations, great. different exercises so that you're not so stuck in that, those old beliefs that I have to look a certain way until I do that. And my biggest thing is 
I was waiting to lose weight to start dating and living my life. Mm. 14 years I didn't date. Wow. And I don't want, I realized one day I was going to wake up at the end of my life and go, where did it go? I don't want anyone to wake up at the end of their life and say, where did my life go? Right. I want people to be able to get out and do things. So if that sounds interesting to you, you'd like to have more confidence about your body and how you walk through the world, you can find more information at the intimacy dojo.com forward slash body confidence, all lowercase, all one word. And we'll put it in the bottom yep. so people can find it. Yep. And I'm thrilled that I get to hang out with Kathy this weekend because next week I'm going to be in Mexico. I know. That sounds so exciting. I'm super excited. Some of you might have seen that I posted a link to the sea going in and out. This beautiful turquoise sea. And I'm going to be there. Oh, um, I'm very <laughs> I'm excited. So I'm going to very Canada. Excited. So I don't think the wrong way. Are you going to be in Canada? Yeah. <laughs> well, next time we'll have to have you come. Yeah, I'll be But I'll be there with my wonderful colleague, Julia Tyndall. Yeah, she's was... wonderful. I really like her a lot. Thank you. I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan. Pretty big fan of yeah. Julia's. We're going to start our mornings off with beautiful yoga. And she does yoga. You know, some classes you like have to follow the form. She really listens to the buddies in the room. So you don't have to be a super twisty bendy yogi to come. She, she really, she doesn't come up with a preset class. She adapts it to what people need. We're going to explore ecstatic, ecstatic tantric practices. We're going to go and visit um, waterfalls and swim in the sea. And the little chalets we're staying on are literally, like, you can literally hear the sound of the waves uh -huh. lapping you to sleep, and you can you can literally fall onto the beach from there. It's that close. Oh, it sounds so hard. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. And um, Yalapa is really pretty untouched. It's this idyllic little bay, and there are no cars. Oh, wow. So you fly into Puerto Vallarta and then take a boat, and we're going to take the boat over together. Um, so it's going to be amazing. I'm Even super excited. I'm really excited. jealous. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't trying to, no. trying to make that hard for you. <laughs> we have lots more retreats coming up, yeah. so perhaps you can join us that time. But <laughs> there are um, – that we did pop the links in there, and we do have yeah. a couple of tickets left uh, for those that want to join us in Mexico. And if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to send me a message, and I will gladly share that. And I want to read this lovely comment from – Lynn Lustland. Oh, that's quite yeah. a name. Yeah, I'm enjoying okay. that name. What does she say? Thank you so much, Kathy, for Body Confidence live stream. Oh, it's my pleasure. I love, I, I think so many of us are trapped in our beliefs about ourselves, our bodies, and everybody's walking around going, if I was just better, these other people would like me, and they're thinking the same thing, and then nobody's connecting. So, right. yeah, and I love that you help people connect and understand their bodies so much better. And for those of you that tuned in, thank you for your courage. Mm. I know this is not, this is a, a difficult topic for a lot of people. And the fact that you're willing to explore different tools or seeing how they could be used, um, that's a gift you give yourself that you walk through the rest of your life with. And that's something, if you can, just really appreciate yourself for being here and doing that. Mm -hmm. And please let us know what you learned yeah. in this video or what what was encouraging. Maybe you learned about what trauma even means for the first time. Uh, or maybe you got really brave and, and tried the tapping yourself. Uh, but please let us know because we, we love this to be an interactive experience. Yeah. And um, we, we're so delighted that we get to support you. And thank you, Kathy, for gifting me this process i uh, love your courage and your vulnerability <laughs> thank you for modeling it yeah. i think so many people walk around feeling like they have to be perfect and that was mm. my belief for so long and when we do we're just we're distanced from our we're pushing part of ourselves away right which comes across a little creepy like if i have mm. to there's part of me that's not um perfect i want to try to push that self away that part mm. away and then people can tell there's something i'm trying to hide they mm. instinctually we know there's something they're hiding, but we don't know what it is. And so our brain is afraid. Like, what are they hiding? A spear or a knife? Are they trying to take advantage of me? What are they doing? So when we start aligning and pulling all of ourselves in imperfections and everything and being vulnerable, we give other people permission to be just who they are too. Mm -hmm. And the creepiness factor just goes away. And we're right. just like, they're like, oh, this person is here as they are. That's really sexy, guys. Mm hmm well, thank you so much for joining us today. We, we, um, we're going to binge with Facebook Live today, yes. aren't we? <laughs> Kathy and I are so busy and fully booked a lot of the time that we, we met this out, uh, months, like months ago. <laughs> and so we, we might treat you to a few Facebook Lives today. So do stay tuned. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye-bye.
Oh, I think it is.